G'day fellas and welcome to another patch overview. We have got the server side patch 14681. Great name right there, rolls off the tongue. It's a very catchy one, I think I'll remember that one. We have got a number of balance changes we're going to be taking a look at. There are some huge buffs in here, some huge nerfs as well. I'm incredibly excited because this is going to form the meta for the final of Golden League. You guys know where to find it. 16 GMT, not 15 GMT. Let's jump in and take a look. So, in server side patch 14681, we are bringing you changes to mangonels. There you go. We recognize there's been a lot of discussion around mangonels and we believe these changes built upon the uniques the units uniqueness we're always open to more feedback however you may also be excited to know that the hre's prelates have remembered how to shuffle their feet and no longer get stuck when inspiring their allies isn't that great to hear let's talk about balance general Manganel now deals 50% more damage to ranged units. Attack radius increased from 0.75 tiles to 0.875 tiles. So two different buffs in there. So number one, obviously, is that it's increasing the radius. That So we, we saw it reduced from 1.25 down to 0.75, I think it was. Uh, now going up to 0.875, so a slight little buff there. But the big thing is the damage, the extra damage to ranged units. So I'm sure you guys remember those games on Mongolian Heights in the Golden League. There was a certain player with 15 mangonels just killing everything <laughs> look those days are uh, behind us now and it means that the mangonel is a bit of a meme ganel but this change guarantees that in the late game you're gonna have a counter unit to those grenadiers those streltsy those longbowmen all of those long range units you're gonna be able to deal with them you're gonna be able to deal with them effectively and interesting that they note we want to focus the mangonel role to be versus strong versus range units like archers and hand cannons, while the Reboldequin is powerful versus melee units. And we did see that a little bit. You know, the age of Reboldequin did come out for a short, brief amount of time, um, and uh, it still does serve that purpose. You know, men at arms, knights, all that stuff, they're going to be taken down very quickly by the Reboldequin, but not the mangonel, though. Let's move forward. Abbasid Dynasty. Reduce research time for House of Wisdom first tier techs from 60 seconds to 30 seconds. Okay, that is just a, a very simple buff. Uh, developer note, other civilizations get to use their landmark bonuses immediately upon age up, while Abbasid Dynasty has to wait for the research to complete. This change is aimed at overcoming the deficit in the early stages of the game. I like this. I like this change. Now, I, I guess I should talk about whether I, I like the changes here to the manga. Now, obviously, I like this change. This 100% makes sense, um, and uh, it, it is the right direction for the manga. Now, because we did see it nerfed, it became a meme. At least now we're seeing some buffs, and it, it's actually got a specific role to counter those ranged units. You're not going to see people making mangonels to deal with palace guards, to deal with men at arms, to deal with horsemen. You're going to see them very specifically. If someone starts massing up crossbows, well, now all of a sudden you've got a counter to them, the mangonels. 10 out of 10 change. Abbasid Dynasty, great to see this change as well means fresh food stuff's going to be coming in 30 seconds earlier. Those cheaper villagers are going to be coming in a little bit earlier as well. Uh, but that's that's everything uh, in the first tier. So that's boot camp, preservation of knowledge, and Grand Bazaar also coming in. Uh, so I don't I don't think we'll see anything other than the economic wing, but it is always going to be uh, possible. But uh, moving forward, we'll take a look at the next changes. Uh, Holy Roman Empire, big one. I know a lot of frogs out there. Holy Roman Empire frogs are going to be so happy to see these changes. Holy Roman Empire will now start the game with a prelate and 100 gold less than they did previously. This is so big. I can't, I can't begin to tell you how big this is. This is massive. This is so huge. In addition to that, prelates no longer become stuck inspiring an out-of-range target. So let's talk about this because obviously the second one, it's a bit more of a bug fix than it is a, a balance change, but obviously it's still a good thing. Now, this is massive. Why is this massive? Because now all of a sudden, the Holy Roman Empire get an extra 20 seconds in the early game. That's 20 seconds more to create a second scout, to create a, a villager. And they now begin the game with essentially a sixth villager. And this is incredibly important because now all of a sudden, with that extra villager, that begins to stack for the entirety of the game. Now, of course, they lose 100 gold, but you got to just do the calculation. How long does it take for one villager to gather 100 gold? And I'm sure the answer is probably like something... 3.2 minutes, something like that. It is not a long time. It is going to be the time that you're in feudal. So you are going to pay up or pay out that that uh, extra villager very quickly or that loss of 100 gold. So why why am I why am I harping on this point? Because this is so big for the Holy Roman Empire. In in Age of Empires 3, every single civilization that has been overpowered in in the past has been a civilization that has had extra villages, more than what they should. Whether that was, you know, the Dutch starting with seven villages, the Portuguese starting with seven villages. villages. I remember when the French originally, in, when Age of Empires 3 came out, we saw them start with six coureurs de bois. And that meant that they were just all overpowered. So I, I wouldn't be surprised here if we see the Holy Roman Empire 
become S tier here. I really wouldn't be surprised because the tempo boost from having that sixth villager being the prelate now, which technically you could argue it's a seventh villager, but I'm not going to because it, it's it's technically the time that you're buying here. This is incredible. I'm, I'm expecting that we're going to start seeing Holy Roman Empire look to enter into a very high tier. At the moment, you know, if we're doing a tier list, I would be putting Holy Roman Empire probably in about C tier, maybe even D tier. But with this change, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing them moving up towards that S tier mark because this speeds up their early game significantly, significantly. You will see their, their fast castles stronger. You'll see the Burgrave Palace come out more. You're going to see a lot of great upgrades uh, coming through for these guys. I tell you what, I'm incredibly excited. Uh, Holy Roman Empire is back on the menu, boys. Let's take a look at the Mongols. Mongols. Mongol Outpost Yam Speed Aura now only applies to units within the radius and no longer lingers for 10 seconds. Thank you. Thank you. A great change right there. Basically prevents those, you know, those annoying raids that you have to deal with and they've still got the, the Yam network on it because there's an outpost sitting outside your base by like a screen or something. Well, it's not going to happen anymore. Great change. So, so far with this patch, I am so impressed. Every single change has been on the money here. Mongol Khant can no longer fire while on the move in the Dark Age. Can I get a golf clap? Can I get like 17 golf claps? Can I get a standing ovation? Good, good. You know, this is something that I talk about quite often. Developers typically will aim to move away from mechanics that make the player feel bad. So as an example, we look at League of Legends. They removed a mechanic called denying. Basically, you could deny your enemy's creeps and kill them, or rather kill your own creeps so that your enemy couldn't kill them. And this created a negative experience for the enemy user because when you were getting your creeps denied, that felt terrible. It felt really bad. And it, it felt the exact same when you're losing your sheep in the Dark Age because the Mongol Khan's just following you. One sheep dead. Two sheep dead. Three sheep dead. I, I'm, I'm already in a difficult spot playing against the Mongols. They're tower rushing me and now I'm down three sheep as well. It, it, it feels terrible. So great change. 10 out of 10 developers. I'm really happy with this. It's great to see Mongols getting some much needed nerfs. Uh, and, and keep in mind, there's going to be big buffs to the Mongols as well as to the Abbasid Dynasty uh, with the Manganel being buffed because they've got the access to improved siege engineering and, and obviously uh, can build those Manganels out in the field. So already they're getting, you know, the Mongols are still getting buffed this patch despite the nerfs. And then we move down to that maps. Danube River was having a bit of a ball problem on the island, indeed it was. And so a royal hunt was called. The map will now spawn boar in the or spawn boar in the following configurations. Microsos only two boar will spawn. <laughs> I remember I played a 2v2 with Fitzbro, and there were four boars in the middle of the island. Man, our enemy was Rus. Luckily he didn't kill them, but if he did, that's a lot, that's a lot of gold right there. What is next? We've heard from players that shift Q commands need some attention. Yeah, you're damn right they do. It, I, I don't even use shift in my game. It just doesn't work for me. It, it does not work. I cannot get shift to function. I cannot get it to work. And we're investigating our options now. As we can only provide specific changes via server side patch, we are not able to include any changes to shift Q in this one, but we're looking uh, to issue a fix for this in the near future. We're also continuing to celebrate the Festival of Ages, so keep an eye out for more rewards coming soon. So, obviously, this is a server-side patch, which means you're not going to get a Steam update. You're just going to, whenever you load up the game, it's, the server's going to prompt you and be like, hey, you got to download a new patch. I think it's like 50 megabytes, 60 megabytes. It's not a big one. Um, but, obviously, this is differentiated from those bigger patches that we do see. So, obviously, this is still a balanced patch. Uh, but, you don't expect to see the, the significant stuff uh, that, that you would normally see in those, those larger patches. Those ones need to go through the, the pipeline. This one doesn't. This one's very easy. They just chuck it out there. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this affects the balance. What are you guys looking forward to? Are you happy with the changes? I, I know for me, I'm very happy with these changes. Even if it kind of affects my play, play style, as you guys know, I love to make Trukunu uh, and Manganel obviously now counters them. So it makes it a little bit more difficult for me. But at the same time, it's a really, really healthy for the balance of the game for ranged units to actually have a decent counter. And the Manganel is definitely going to be it. So... Without further ado, without further ado, without anything further to say, I wrap it up for you guys. Thank you guys for watching the video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And uh, hey, happy gaming.